Welcome to another unboxing from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Today I'm unboxing and have been unboxing our last couple videos, uh, various lock and load uh, publishing games. This game is called Heroes of the Pacific, which is one of their many, and that's actually something that's really very cool, one of their many lock and load tactical series. These are tactical games set in different periods of time. Obviously this one, Heroes of the Pacific, focuses on the Pacific Theater of, theater of Operations during World War II. You can see a really cool picture of a Japanese commander there. Um, we also have Hero, Heroes of the Falklands. There's many others. Uh, but this is one that I was very drawn to, mainly because I enjoy World War II. I also really like tactical war games, and I like the Pacific Theater. In fact, I've been trying recently to connect, collect more Pacific Theater games. I, I tend to have a lot of European theater or North Africa, uh, but don't have many, or East Front games, but don't have many in the Pacific. So this is probably my fourth or fifth game in the Pacific, and I, I'm excited about it. So let me go ahead and rip the shrink off. Uh, I pre-cut it. You'll also notice there to the right, I received also what's called the Battle Generator Pack and the Extra Maps. We'll go through those uh, here in a moment once we've gone through the main box. But I, I'm going to say this. This is one thing that I really like about the Lock and Load Publishing Games. They look nice. Um... They really look good. They look good in the box. The boxes are great. Their components are fantastic. And I'm I'm very, very pleased with the way their games uh, look. Haven't played one yet. I'm getting into that. We're hopefully going to play a couple of those this weekend. Uh, but that's a great picture there of a Japanese commander. Uh, you can see he has his katana at his side. Um, really nice. But once again, this is a tactical war game. Complexity is medium. Solitaire suitability is high, made for one to two players, and it takes two to four hours per scenario. Uh, the game includes five maps, uh, three sheets of counters, 330 plus counters, a rule book, a color module book. So those are going to be your scenarios, 12 different scenarios, several player aids, and some dice. Uh, the game is designed by Jeff Lewis and produced by David Heath. So the game looks awesome. You can see some of those counters. You do have aircraft, you have infantry. Obviously those are artillery. Um, you have commanders. I, I think there are tanks. Yep, there we go. There's a tank uh, and maybe some other vehicles. And then there's a hero. So really, really a nice looking game. I'm gonna go ahead and get it open. And once again, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, really, really like tactical war games and, and these games are impressive. Uh, dice, rounded corners, not a huge fan, uh, but these are good dice. Thanks for providing those. You really can never have enough dice. Here is the module rules. So this is specifically the Heroes of the Pacific module set of rules. So th these will be an addition to the lock and load World War II era, era tactical core rules. We'll, we'll look at that rule book here in just a moment. Uh, but these are in addition to those rules. As these rule books typically are, really thick card stock for the covers, and inside is um, semi-gloss paper. Really like that, that drawing there of that American soldier with that Tommy gun, uh, really cool. Um, there are 12 scenarios in this uh, game. Rules aren't overly dense. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of scenario-specific rules. My guess is they're going to have specific rules with snipers, bonsai attacks, and here you can kind of see Japanese snipers, uh, stick bomb is another one that they have. Here's bonsai attacks, surprise, surprise. Uh, ninjutsu movement, ninjutsu movement, so that's kind of interesting. Here's some different rules, specific rules about American Marines, their LVT-4s or landing vehicles. Uh, they can... Enter ocean and surf hexes, kind of cool. Uh, rifle squad, certain rules. And then here you go, into the scenarios. There are 12 of those. Uh, really, once again, love these scenarios because they have nice uh, opening 
pictures that help you understand what happened, where it's happening, the dates, really like that. And then here's some scenario specific rules, setup and different things, the tiles you're gonna use. And you can see they go through uh, a lot of those. Looks like this is, is that Tarawa? Yeah, Tarawa, I love Tarawa. Um, Gifu, these are well-known, Guadalcanal, these are well-known known Japanese, uh, the Pacific Theater battles, so really cool. Uh, White Beach on Pelelu, really, really awesome. I'm excited. Uh, I think I was very excited also when we opened White Star Rising. Uh, here's Pelelu as well. Do they have Saipan? There's Iwo Jima. Let's see, only a couple more scenarios. Okinawa, nope, doesn't look like they had Saipan or maybe I skipped over it. But that's okay, you can't have every battle. Um, so there's the scenarios and the scenario specific uh, rules. Here are the core rules. And this is kind of like a, a bound book. There, this is a lot, this is a lot of information. Um, this book's gonna run about 65 pages. There are several reference tables. They have good player aids, uh, but you're gonna have to do a lot of reading. Although once again, this is not really dense. There are a lot of pictures showing. Uh, this is like uh, fire, uh, fields of fire, covered arcs, ordnance, leaders, lots of different information. So there's the basic rules. And once again, there's the different nationality troops there. You see some Germans, Japanese, American, British. So really, really cool. Here are the maps and their, their uh, tiles. So let me, let me kind of show you. So there are small tiles. So this would be a beach landing. You can see this is a card, it folds out, and there you go. So this will come with a scenario, it might say use map 31 along with map, whatever, 38, and you're gonna put those together to create your scenario uh, map. Um, yeah, they look great. I like the, the fact that they're cards. I like the fact that they're fairly small. Uh, and, and I'm sure there's some scenarios where you can put four or five of these together. This is obviously some elevation, so you're gonna be maybe defending a hill and you're gonna have the advantage. Um, they are uh, pretty thick and durable. I'm surprised that they're not double-sided. So that's the back, they're just blank. Maybe a wasted opportunity, uh, but here's another look at a card. So it looks like there's six cards. Uh, see if I can count. One, two, nope, there are five cards. Uh, so that's what you're gonna use to create the battlefield. Here are the counters. I love counters. Two sheets of counters. And actually one of the counters fell out. I hope it's in the box. I don't, actually three sheets of counters. I don't see it, it's probably in the box. Let, let me show you a little close up of these counters. So here's some of the weapon assets that you have. Really cool, you can see the Type 96 machine gun, that, that famous Japanese machine gun. Uh, there's an Ampulomet, uh, which looks for mines, I think that's right. Uh, there's Type 92 machine gun, different Japanese weapons that you can see. There's some Japanese units and leaders. Uh, Colonel Ichido, Lieutenant Kusanagi, and Sergeant Hiro. Al along with others, there's a sniper. Those are really nice looking counters. Um, different, uh, here's like the leaders. They have shaken and wounded as you turn them over. Here's the different uh, weapons and armor or arms that you were able to look at, different uh, administrative counters, really cool. Don't, haven't really read the rules, so I don't know what, uh, what those are. Once again, pre-rounded counters, so you don't have to clip them, I like it. Here's some of the American counters. There's a 60 millimeter mortar. You've got some uh, heavy duty machine guns. There's a BAR, every American rifle squad had a BAR in it to give it firepower. There's some of their heroes. You can see Lieutenant Lecky, Sergeant Stryker, perfect name. Private Colonus, Colonel Wiseman. So really cool, great looking counters. There's some of the tanks. There's an aircraft, an F-4F Wildcat. Very uh, familiar silhouette there you can notice from the Pacific Theater. And there's that missing counter and I don't, 
Let me actually look for it now. Yep, there it is. Thank heavens. I didn't want to have a missing counter. Uh, but there's that a look at that counter that had fallen out. They're really well punched and they fall out pretty quickly. I like it. This is called an open top vehicle LVTF. It has crazy legs on there. I don't know if that's a nickname given to that specific type of vehicle or it's specific to this counter. Maybe that's something I'll need to look at. Yeah, they all have different names. Bad Boys, Agony. So that's kind of cool. They've tried to throw some uh, specific names in. Here's a look at some of the other vehicles. Uh, you can see some aircraft. There's some wreck counters, initiative turn track. Ooh, there's some bunkers. Those are really cool looking. Mines. Yeah, this game looks awesome. I'm really impressed by uh, Lock and Load Publishing. I'm just going to say it. So there's a look at those counters. Really like those counters. Three sheets, 330 plus counters. Uh, these are player aids. So different reference cards and player aids. Nice looking cards, by the way. So here's skill reference card. Uh, looks like they're skills different leaders have. You can see they're a leader's leader. Let me just give you a look at that. This skill allows the owner during the operations phase to, to attempt to rally all the units in its current hex. That's pretty cool. There's one from the masses. Gung Ho, Marine Hero, single use. This Marine can either ignore the first wound result or gain one additional firepower in melee. Awesome. So that's kind of cool. There's some other, uh, those are Japanese leader tactics or whatever they called them. Uh, here is terrain type. Here's a chart that shows terrain type. Very easy to read, big. Here's also some other tables for Americans showing your die roll, the results. Don't know how the combat system works. Um, but yeah, these are great looking reference cards. I like them. Really like them. Very sturdy. And these are going to be well used, I think. These are different rules that you might have. You can see off-board artillery, melee, sniper fire, small arms versus unarmored. Really cool. So nice player aids. Let's see what, is else, what else is in the box there. Uh, looks like a couple more player aids. Weapons, ammo, and targets. And then here's how you keep score. The turn track uh, in different uh, casualty boxes, Japanese casualties and American casualties. It's a single-sided card. Uh, and then here you have a double-sided uh, card. This has sequence of play on the back. So I, you know what? I'm excited about this game. I think it looks great. So we've looked at the base game. I'm going to go ahead and look at the extra maps. It's called X Maps, but I, I think that stands for extra maps. Nice bags. Ah, damn it. They're always just a little small. I just wish they were... Just a little over, this one is, I think, a little oversized. It's just a tight fit. Well, I ripped the bag. Of course I did, Grant, you're such a gorilla. There's the bag, uh, and this is the cover of that X Maps. And you can see, oh yeah, these are bigger maps too, bigger than the originals, but they're just, oh, they're okay. They're oversized maps, maybe. It looks like they're the exact same maps just oversized, so extra sized or extra large, something like that. So that's cool. That'll be fun. Bigger hexes. Um, have to see exactly how those are used, but nice little addition to the game. Now let me go ahead and put that away. And then here I'm going to go ahead and do the battle generator. And, and this is going to be how you're going to randomly create and develop your own uh, scenarios for the game. Because I'll be honest, as I've played Combat Commander probably the most out of any tactical World War II game. I've probably played it 20 times. And, you know, after you do the scenarios, you don't always want to go back and do them again. Sometimes you want to create your own scenarios. So this book appears, once again, it's very similar to the other rule books. It simply has guidance about how to random, randomly generate battles. So... Don't know the rules about that, but you're going to go through here and determine turn limits and the size of the battle, what maps to use, map orientations and placement, which maps to use. Oh, this, this is pretty cool. So it, once again, gives you a random way to generate encounters. So that's a nice addition. Here's an example of all the different lock and load tactical World War II era 
games. You can see there's a ton of them. Uh, we have Heroes of the Falcons, which is more modern era. Uh, but that's, that is Heroes of the Pacific and Battle Generator here. It looks like you've got, sorry, I didn't mean to cut that short. These are force uh, tables and points. So you're, you're going to pick your counters based on a point system. Here's what you're going to get. It gives you the max number you can have. So once again, a nice aid to bring some variety to your games. So that's a look at Heroes of the Pacific from Lock and Load Publishing. Really excited about this game. I think this game looks awesome. I'm looking forward to playing this with Alexander, and I'm also looking forward to playing it on my own. Uh, we have the Lock and Load Tactical Solo uh, module. We'll have to try to figure out how that works. Uh, but I'm looking forward to learning those rules and then maybe playing this game on my own as well as I, uh, as I have time. So go ahead and uh, click like if you enjoyed the video. If you uh, like our channel, go ahead and subscribe. You can also check out more in-depth reviews, AARs, strategy articles, uh, and other items on our website at theplayersaid.com. Please go ahead and check that out and look around. Lots of good stuff, I think. Of course, I'm going to say that, but I think it's good stuff. Um, so I've enjoyed bringing this box to you. I'm really looking forward to playing some of these Lock and Load Publishing games. Thank you to David Heath uh, for providing these games to us uh, so that we can review those. We will give a fair, honest, and unbiased review. Uh, we're going to try to play them and share with you how we feel about them, uh, what we liked, what we didn't, what worked well, what didn't what could be improved, that kind of thing. So look forward to a review of this game sometime over the next month or two as we play through various scenarios and try to figure out what it's all about. So thanks for watching. This has been Grant from theplayersaid.com.